Use the referral link in the description to G2A.com for all of your Xbox codes, PlayStation codes and video games and be sure to use the code CHEZ at checkout to get yourself 3% cash back. Hey guys, welcome to episode 14 of the Bayer Leverkusen series here on FIFA 18. We're currently locked at the top of the table on 50 points with Bayern Munich. A single goal behind them with regards to goal difference, plus 25 to plus 24. And we've both scored similar amounts and conceded similar amounts. It's not like I've scored 20 more than they have, but conceded 20 more. My offence is, or their offence is just as good as mine, and my defence is just as good as theirs. Which makes a change for me, having a, an actual pretty decent defence. I'm normally up with the, those highest conceded in the league at this stage. So I'm really pleased with how this Leverkusen series is going. We have Borussia Mönchengladbach, and Gladbeck. Fortuna Dusseldorf and Augsburg today. Then that will leave us with just six games remaining. Leipzig, Frankfurt and Dortmund. Then Stuttgart, Werder Bremen and Hannover 96. We are not far away from season number two. But how will season number one end? We will find out in due course. Starting with Borussia Mönchengladbach who are in sixth and chasing a Champions League spot. In fact have a game in hand. On everyone above us and two games above them and two games in hand on Augsburg. So, a uh, big game for this, big game for them. This Bruce Mutz and Gladbach. It's a big game for me too. Drop the video a like if you enjoy. Subscribe to the channel too to make sure you don't miss out on any further content. Let's start with a win. So, Mutz and Gladbach starting with Jan Sommer in goal. Four at the back. Vent, Ginter, Vestergaard, and Tony Janska. It's a good solid team. Torgan Hazard on the left. Kramer, Strubel in the middle. Vargas again. Vargas with no face. I remember that now. And he scored against me last time, didn't I? Didn't he? Did we draw against Leverkusen last time? Leverkusen. I'm Leverkusen. Did we draw against Mutsin Gladbach last time? We played them. I seem to remember Vargas scoring. And for some reason, 2 2 is the scoreline that sticks in my mind. We are on a run of five straight league victories, though. So maybe this would be a great opportunity to make a sixth. And send out a message to Bayern Munich. Oh. We are certainly, unexpectedly, league title challengers this year. Big switch. Looking to send Torgan Hazard away. Thankfully Mitchell Weisser knocks that down. Very dangerous ball over there. Torgan Hazard is going to be one of their most creative players. We are going to, be, have to, we are going to have to be even, if I get my words in the right order at our best defensively to ensure that they don't score a couple of goals right out there to Bellarabi oh pen maybe apparently not I'm not sure about that I think that should be a pen to us Dermic into Vargas oh, that's a great ball through to Herman who's in behind and no surprises buries that opportunity the through ball was superb and once Herman reaches Full tap, you're not catching him. He's so fast. Tucks it home at the near post. Kureki beaten. Bruce Mutz and Gladbach one. Leverkusen nil. Win that header, please. Well up, Jonathan. You can always rely on Jonathan Tarr to win an aerial battle. Nice to Bellarabi. Kolomin sat behind the ball here. Sometimes a 4 4 2 can be quite difficult to break down. I need to find people in gaps like that between the defensive line and the midfield out to Leon Bailey, hit the effort and equalise. Brilliant goal. Really, really pleased with that. We're level not long after going behind. Leon Bailey pulls us back into the game. A little back heel there to Josip Dermic. Oh, I read the turn, thankfully, otherwise I would have been in trouble there. Just past the hour mark now. Waiting for either side to create something clear cut in this second half. Werner. I need runners from midfield. I've got one. Here's Lars Bender. Across to Timo Werner again. He struck that well enough, but it was straight down the throat of the keeper, unfortunately. Still just over 20 minutes to go. There is time for one or more goals. He's given away. That's poor. Looking forward for Timo Werner. Here's Hermann, their goal scorer. Janska will find him again. Jonathan Tarr steps in. Oh, God, that was a heavy touch from Bailey, wasn't it? What's going on there? That was outrageously poor. Giving the ball straight back to Bruce Mucci and Gladbach, who then giving it straight back to me. If anything sums up this second half, it's that passage of play. Neither side showing the quality needed to get the win here. 
It's a nice stop by Werner. Unfortunately, there was two people around him. Christoph Kramer steps in. I've got a couple of changes waiting to be made. Alaria is going to come on up top. So I can perhaps be a little bit more direct with the way that I'm playing. And I've got Kai Havertz going to come on on the, um, on the right-hand side as well. Brandt's going to move out to the left. And Timo Werner will drop into the cam roll. As he fires wide. So my lineup's going to look like this. Havertz on the right with Brandt on the left. Now Werner at cam and Alario up top. Unfortunately, Timo Werner can't give us a second goal on that occasion. But with seven minutes to go, there's time for one. Will it be me or will it be them that scores? Werner drops a little bit deeper. Give it forward there into Timo Werner. Uses acceleration. It's good footwork. Look for Alario. He's off the bench here. He goes down. He's injured and no foul given. I'm not sure whether I should have had a penalty there. He's still not up here. He's still not up. We'll get that around the corner there to Mitchell Weiser, who will deliver it to the back post, where Julian Brandt can't win the header because Tony Janschka has risen better at the back post. Corner to come in from Aaron Gies. Oh, it's terrible. It's a really bad corner. Still going to drop to Timo Werner, who back heels it into the box, and then it's cleared away. And the referee, presumably, will blow his final whistle before I'm able to create anything else. A 1-1 draw against Mucci and Gladbach. We had chances there at the end of that second half to win it. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to take any of them. Not many chances in the game at all, as you can see there. Our win streak comes to an end, but our undefeated streak continues. Bayern batter Nuremberg. So they're now two points clear at the top above us. We've now got a game... Oh, monthly scout reports. First time I've had one of these back. He's going to be terrible. He might be decent. Uh... This guy's going to be better, isn't he? I'll say no to you. I think I want people that have potential to get into the 90s. So we'll give these to Timo Bauer and Matthias Schulter another month. But this guy at 17 and maximum of 53. Probably going to be absolutely dead. But this guy, Timo Bauer, looks like he could be handy. We'll have to wait and see how he progresses. But for now, yes. We've got a game against... Uh, who was it? It wasn't Nuremberg, was it? Fortuna Dusseldorf. Fortuna Dusseldorf coming up. Actually, one thing I do need to change is this training. You guys uh, told me that you want me to stop training Kai Havertz and start to train Alexandre Sark. And uh, I wholeheartedly agree with that. It's a very good decision. So we shall do that. I'm going to continue to uh, to train the young right-back Oriana as well, though. Uh, but let's train Isak's uh, passing as well as his... That's short passing, which is not long passing. I'm not going to need his long passing to be any good, am I? Training short passing, so his link-up play could be better. But Oriana is now getting towards being 70 rated with all the training that we've been doing. So I'm very pleased with uh, how he's been progressing. If you think I should stop training Oriana in uh, short passing and crossing and start to train another player at the club, then do let me know in the comment section down below and I will act upon that feedback in the next couple of episodes. But... Fortuna Dusseldorf up for us next. Lee Young Jay out there to Raman, forward to Hennings. Missed the tackle. Missed the done though to win it back. Adam Geese across to Bailey. I see the run being made by Timo Werner, but Caraman's out muscled him. Lee Young Jay. Driving down the line. Back to Zimmer. Forward to Hennings. Trying to out muscle him and can't. Please win this, Henrix. He hasn't. That will be a goal kick. Not very convincing there aerially, was he? Expected better, to be completely honest, from Henriks at the back post there. Timo Werner will challenge for this header, but only 5 foot 11 is not going to win many aerial battles like that. Should probably use a different tactic when getting goal kicks. I'm playing a couple of rotation players in this side, as you will have seen from uh, Jose Sarr in goal, taking that goal kick. We've got Kai Havertz starting on the right-hand side. Henrik starting... At right back as well and Golovin is playing in the cam roll play that we'll find here who will then look for Timo Werner who will lay this across here to Leon Bailey or who very nearly replicates our goal against Bruce and and Gladbach and their goalkeeper Rensing just hooks that away anywhere will do for Fortuna Dusseldorf in that situation Bailey forward to Golovin now we'll slot through Timo Werner and his four star weak foot won't give us a 1-0 lead expected that to be on target Wendell. Wendell. 
Golovine turns well. Werner oh, he spun brilliantly there. Timo Werner used the acceleration to get away. I still can't finish. Golovine could turn that home and Rensing somehow gets back for a double save. How has he done that then? He can make a double save, but he can't keep the ball in play when he kicks it. Unbelievable goalkeeping. I should be 1-0 up there. Thoroughly disappointed that I'm not. Golovine will still try and drive and get himself or a teammate a goal to give us a 1-0 lead. But unfortunately, it's not going to be. Not yet, at least. Keys on that. Forward into Raman. There's Schmidt. Raman. Bender intercepts. Quick counter-attack, maybe. We do have the pace to do it. Evidently. Oh, it just, it just snuck in the post. I wasn't sure when I dinked it whether I'd actually made the right decision because the keeper didn't go to ground. He stood there but couldn't react in time. And it, oh, it only just came down before it reached the bar. Timo Werner on his left foot scoops it up. It goes over the bar or higher than the bar and oh, just tips in time. 1-0 with four minutes to be played in the first half. Geez. into Henricks through the gap there to Golovin down the line into Timo Werner Golovin again Ender is he done Jakovic out to Wendell so obviously down the line in Bailey this is great possession play at the beginning of the second half Bender to make that move a little bit quicker but we've actually found Timo Werner oh look for Golovin to finish it off Ooh. Ooh. even closer than Timo Werner's effort he definitely did miss hit it. He didn't hit that anywhere near as cleanly as I wanted him to, Golovin. But it's ended up in the back of the net, and that's the most important thing. I thought as, that once I'd gotten the turn that maybe I'd made a mistake in actually playing the next pass. But actually, as it happens, if he'd hit that cleaner and not scuffed it towards the corner, the keeper might actually have saved it. It needed that dodgy connection to find the bottom corner. But find the bottom corner it did. We have ourselves a little bit of daylight now. Corner for Dostadorf. Scoreline in the top left hasn't worked properly. The scoreboard in the top left hasn't worked properly. And we'll come away on the counter here. And maybe if we score a goal, it will reset Kai Havertz. We'll look around the corner there for Timo Werner. We might force the reset. We haven't yet. But Bender gets there, takes a touch to settle himself. And pulls the shot wide of the target. That's really, really poor. Substitution is being made by Dusseldorf here, but not good enough from Lars Bender. They expected better of him. Nice touch by Raman to get past Henriks, and Nielsen has played in behind. There's an option on the far side. Is Aaron Gies quick enough? Kind of. Cotterill. Oh, God, that was terrible. Come on, mate. You've got to be better than that. They have had a couple of opportunities, Dusseldorf, but they've just been so poor in front of goal. But it's no surprise they haven't scored. 20 minutes to go. Still 2-0. Golovin into Werner. Cross there to Wendell. To Bender. Rangis. Oh, nice drop of the shoulder there. Pull it back through the gap. Timo Werner. Oh, the little move took him into the defender rather than around the defender. If he'd done that and went to the left rather than to the right, he might well have found his... Self, or himself uh, even, Bender. good grammar, in behind for a third goal. Werner, Werner. oh, he might get himself another assist and Golovin a third goal. That's much better than the last one. Last time Golovin tried an effort from the edge of the box like that. Aiming for the moon. This time into the back of the net. Really nice finish. Leverkusen three in the third minute of added time to give us all three points. Lovely little back heel. Arrowed into the back of the net. Game over, as if it wasn't already decided. But that will be the last action of the game as well because the referee will blow his final whistle. Good. Now, we had dropped points. Well, yeah, dropped points and dropped further behind Bayern Munich in the last uh, round of fixes. And Bayern haven't played yet, so I still don't know what the situation is. Let's head into the third and final game of the episode, though. Try and make it three win uh, two wins from three, sorry. Got a scouting update from my uh, one that went down to Brazil. Looks like Leonardo Castro 
might be a decent player. This guy is a no, also a no. Potential for Pedro Jesus. Uh, Diego Neves is probably a no. A no for Francisco Tavares and Rafael Henriquez is a no as well. But two potentials from Brazil as well as one potential from Germany. We might have a couple of youth players coming up towards the end of the season that can be involved in season number two. Kai Havertz wants to play in uh, this one against Augsburg. I might bring him off the bench. I'm probably not going to start him. We'll go back to... Actually, no. Let's put Tin Yedvai on. And, uh, and I have, actually, mm, Yedvai or Retsos. Let's play Retsos. I want him to grow a little bit. Hakimi hasn't had a game for ages, so we'll throw him in as well. Baumgart Linga hasn't played for a while. Lars Ben has been underperforming recently. And let's throw Alario up top. And uh, we'll have Isak on the bench, because I had him on the bench in the last one and didn't actually bring him on. Right. All right, let's go then. Uh, oh, no, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do it on this screen, do I? I want to do it on that screen so that it doesn't automatically save the changes. Well done, Ches. Anyway, Augsburg next. Hakimi inside to Lario. Nice ball around the corner to Julian Brandt, who drops the shoulder. Well, could have been a dream start. It wasn't. Good save by Benitez to deny me the opportunity to go 1-0 up inside the opening five minutes or so. Well, Jonathan Tarr won't have a simpler goal in his entire career. Retsos flicks it on towards the back post. It was a shot. And it was going wide. But Jonathan Tarr just stood there onside to side foot home from a yard. Not the best of shots from Retsos. He had to stoop to get to it, though, because the height wasn't quite... Actually, was that going wide or was that sneaking in? I, th I'm th I think it was going wide, but we'll have a look at the instant replay just to make sure. I'm not sure as that was... Yeah, it was definitely going wide, wasn't it? You can see where I'm aiming, though. I'm aiming at the near post. Well, to be fair, I'm not aiming at the near post. Or as he, as he connects, my aim changes, look. Perhaps I just didn't quite time that properly. It was definitely going wide, but Jonathan Tarr, well, he's not going to miss that, is he? I don't think anybody would miss that. 1-0. Nice tackle by Baumgart, Lingard on Bayer. Bayer will play that inside to Aaron Gee. He's driving forward the pace, and the man coming in from out wide was quite distracting there. Unfortunately, Julian Brandt's effort is blocked. Coup into Rodrigo. Trying to outmuscle him, but can't. Just played against Coop when recording a, um, a World Cup episode with Mexico. So we come up against him two videos in a row. Bam got Linger out wide to Wendell, forward to Bailey. Alario is looking to make a move, but he's had to hold the ball up more so than break in behind. Brandt will look to send Bellarabi in behind. Only thing is, nobody's in the box yet. We'll stand it up. Bailey's arriving. If I get to that, I can't. Max will head behind for a corner. Very nearly able to get myself 2 0 in front. Retsos wins this header. Oh, off the top of the bar. He got the assist for the first one. And he's desperately unlucky there, the young Greek, not to get on the score sheet himself. It just wouldn't quite drop in time. That's a Brandt. Aaron Gies forward looking for Alario. Oh, good tackle from the defender. Aaron Gies. Alario. Bellarabi. Oh, Bellarabi, if you'd have gone down there, my man, that would have been a certain penalty. The cross comes in. I'm not sure whether that struck an arm or not, but Kadira gets in the way. Bailey to deliver the corner. Retsos came close before. He's not going to get the opportunity to do so here. In fact, he was out of the box, weirdly. Nice turn by Brandt. Bit of space for the shot. Good save by Benitez. We are hammering Augsburg here in the opening half an hour. They can't even get into my half, let alone... Oh, he says as they get into my half let alone uh, stand a chance of scoring a goal. Jonathan Tarr did outmuscle the man there, but couldn't come away with the ball. Here's Max, the left back, pushing forward. Drops the shoulder on Hakimi. That's a nice move. Into Heller, across to Ku. Good save by Fredeki. Now they have a corner at this end. Rodrigo to deliver. And it comes. Up we go. Oh, I'm not going to get the chance to counter Mayada. I might have considered a shot there, if that were me. Guvalier into Heller, and the shot comes in, but Kudeki holds. But for a moment, I was going to jinx myself again by mentioning the fact that they'd not been very good or gotten in my half, and then <laughs> in that same highlight, they go and score. Julian Brandt's first touch lets him down there, unfortunately, and the defender gets back. Despite that brief scare, still 1-0 in front. 
Baku into Rodrigo. Nice tackle by Tart. Wendell back in there to Baumgartlinger, who's had a pretty solid game, to be fair to him, Baumgartlinger, to this point in the proceedings. Very pleased with the way that he stepped up to the plate, because a couple of times I've used him, I've been particularly disappointed. I have been disappointed with Lario so far in this one, I have to be honest. His hold-up plays decent at times, but he has struggled to have too much of an impact. Retzels gets the tackle in, pleased with him in this game, for sure. Brandt looking for Lario now. We will use the runner Bailey, then look for Brandt. Is there space on the far side for Bellarabi? Yes, there is. Get the shot away early. And it wasn't far wide at all. Going to be 1 0 at half time. Bellarabi with a throw. And Giz has come short. Knocked that back. I was trying to knock it back to Hakimi. Instead, we'll just throw it to him from the secondary opportunity. Go back to Hakimi again. Drill it into the middle there to Baumgart Linger. I brought on Alexander Isak and Kai Havertz. And the two very nearly link up there for an opportunity straight off the bench. Kimi's not showing much strength in that particular opportunity, but that's a loose pass. Aaron Gies forward to Brandt, who finds his start. He's only got a two-star weak foot, and that's evident there. I thought I'd give it a go. His first action, his first shot in the Bayer Leverkusen shirt. There will be plenty more to come, that is for sure. There we go. And finds Hahn. Andre Hahn in behind. Equaliser for Augsburg out of nowhere. He's come off the bench and he's pulled them level. They've done nothing offensively in this game. And then that one through ball sees all three defenders completely bemused. And he buries it. Right then. Ben Barson. Trying to step in. Oh, come on. That's not a foul. That's not a foul. Free kick for Augsburg. Less than five minutes to go. Gregory stood over it. Max with him. He is going to shoot. I was a little bit concerned for a brief moment there when the keeper didn't move his feet at all. As it turned out, he didn't need to move his feet, so it was all right. Isak gets that to Bellarabi. I'll turn. Get it back to Alexander Isak again. We'll look to accelerate away. Turn. Maybe find a teammate. All go all the way. Alexander Isak, it's saved by Benitez. Win that. Knocks it down well. Isak gets there. Nice turn. And again, Alexander Isak. Good save by Benitez for a second time. He's trying his hardest here, the youngster, to get himself onto the score sheet on debut, but it just won't seem to happen for him. Left foot, right foot, finessed, laces. Doesn't matter what I try, I can't seem to score with Alexander Isak right now, but there's plenty of time to learn how to use him and plenty of time for him to grow. Well, Levine oh, beats the man, but the final whistle goes. It's a draw against Albert. That's disappointing. Only five points from today's episode. It's not good enough. I had so many chances. I can't quite believe I haven't been able to get the win. Bayern played Dortmund on the Saturday as the late kickoff. No idea what the lead table is going to look like now, actually. Because heading into this game, or this round of fixes, I hadn't seen the league update. And no, they still actually have a game in hand on me, Bayern. I haven't seen them play on the previous match day, and they didn't play on the previous match day. So they have a game in hand and a one-point lead. We actually are we guaranteed Champions League already? There are f no, there are six games to go, eighteen points, and the lead is thirteen. Okay, we're not guaranteed Champions League football yet, but by the end of the next episode tomorrow, we might well be guaranteed uh, Champions League football. Nice to see Sark come off the bench and actually have chances. It's not like I struggled to use him. He was. He was a good introduction into that game. So fingers crossed with a little bit more regular football next season in the Pokal and lesser Champions League group stage games. We can actually get him to grow quite well. But that's all for today. Tomorrow is Leipzig, Frankfurt and Dortmund. Drop the video a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe to the channel too to make sure you don't miss out on any further content. I'll see you next time.